In theory, the risk associated with needle biopsies increases as the needle diameter increases. When a cutting needle is used, the risk may be increased. However, the overall complication rate is small, approximately 2%. Bleeding is the primary complication when performing a biopsy, most often due to undetected coagulopathy. Highly vascularized lesions will increase this risk. A bleeding disorder is contraindication to percutaneous biopsy. However, patients are often treated with blood products or medications to temporarily remedy the disorder so that the biopsy can be performed. For most biopsies, a scan should be taken at three to five millimeters slice thickness at the needle location and one slice above and below the expected needle location until the tip of the needle is visualized. When the location is confirmed, Tissue samples can be taken and prepared according to the laboratory protocols. A post-procedural scan is taken, typically at five millimeter slice thicknesses to identify any complications such as pneumothorax in the chest or a hematoma. The goal of a biopsy procedure is to obtain an adequate sample for laboratory evaluation with minimal trauma to the surrounding tissue. This goal is achieved with accurate and expedient placement of the needle. This CT-guided left sacral biopsy procedure and possible complications were explained to the patient and informed consent was obtained. CT guidance was used for the biopsy using a sterile technique. A local anesthetic along with IV fentanyl was administered to the patient. Three bone biopsies of the left sacral ala were performed with two specimens successfully obtained. The patient suffered no immediate complications and recovered in the radiology department. This is an image of a biopsy of T12 vertebra using the transco vertebral approach in a 40-year-old woman with breast carcinoma. The CT fluoroscopic image was taken with the patient lying prone and shows the tip of an osteocut needle passing through the costovertebral junction towards the right T12 vertebral body osteolytic lesion. A CT-guided thoracic biopsy is usually performed for the diagnosis of suspicious lung, pleural, or mediastinal lesions. It can be performed as an outpatient procedure where patient monitoring and complications support are available. A small percentage of lung and pleural biopsies may be performed under ultrasound guidance in specific circumstances. 
the most common complication of CT guided lung biopsy is the occurrence of pneumothorax during or after the intervention. Many measures can be taken to prevent the development of pneumothorax. After the removal of the needle, patients should immediately be positioned with the puncture site down for at least one hour after completing the procedure, and the patient should remain reclining for the next four hours. These CT images show a coaxial needle inserted into the pleural nodule. After the biopsy, the control image on the right shows a small local pneumothorax and an intraalveolar hemorrhage seen as ground glass infiltrates in local lung parenchyma. These images come from a CT-guided core needle biopsy in a 51-year-old female with a pancreatic head tumor. In image A, we see a contrast-enhanced slice demonstrating a hypodense tumor in the pancreatic head as noted by the arrows. The detour route was planned to avoid penetration of the liver and kidney, which is shown by the dotted yellow line. In images B and C, we see a prone non-enhanced CT scan showing the insertion path of the coaxial guided needle through the fat between the liver and the kidney. And in D and E, when the needle reaches the planned turning point, the needle direction shifts slightly to avoid penetrating the needle and the liver. After successful insertion of the coaxial needle into the lesion as seen in image F, the biopsy gun was fired into the pancreatic head tumor. <laughs> 